Over the 30 years that, that I've been in the practice, uh, what's come clear is that uh, in practice, uh, IP rights almost never arise as a singular event when we're actually dealing with something in the real world. And it's the kind of basic disjunction that we have between what you learn in, 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 in law school and then what you encounter in practice is that um, what we've done as a matter of law is create a series of legal rights that uh, are directed towards a, a given set of facts and it's very unusual that a single legal uh, uh, system of law, whether copyright, patent, etc., will fully cover or address those phenomena. Or to say the other way is the phenomena tend to be much more complex than any single system uh, or legal, legal right from the point of view IP can cover. And that was really the motivation for how to look at IP in a, I think, in a in a way that more accurately reflects what goes on in the real world, that um, there are multiple IP rights that in one way or the other uh, cover a given set of phenomena or what we encounter in the real world as practitioners. Now we also, of course, maybe created a bit of artificiality because we said we're going to look at them in pairs. You could look at them sometimes as triads. You could go on and on. Sometimes you get three, four, and five. Litigators love to do this. They like to claim everything they can. We did it because we thought it would give uh, structure to the individual chapters. So that was the artificiality that we imposed. But short of that, I think the, it, it derived from, uh, from reality, from legal reality. Uh, now, having said that, not all overlaps are, are uh, created equal. Uh, we identified three major source types of, of overlap. Um, one, at, one is when the, um, there are um, two sets of IP rights that really address the same phenomenon in their entirety. And there are other, there's another set of rights where the overlap um, that will only partially cover. If you think about Venn diagrams, it's like this. And the first is like this, OK? And the third category is if we have a rectangle, and that is the phenomenon or phenomena, OK? We will have two sets of IP rights which abut each other. So A plus B will um, address the phenomena. And without having A plus B, you're only doing it in a partial way. And then the fourth, which I would say there's a fourth category, but more three and a half categories. You have a situation in databases and copyright is perhaps the best example. Sometimes there's an overlap. Sometimes there, there isn't an overlap. That's a, 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 it's a creature of whatever particular legislation exists. So the database is having a bit of, a, of an uncertain um, status in the law. Sometimes there'll be an overlap. Sometimes there won't be. With respect to most others, if you have two traditional IP rights, the answer is yes. And the question will be whether how it fits into one of the three categories that we came up with. So that's how we conceived of I, uh, over, overlapping IP rights.